Hey everyone, so this is the video for our second tutorial in process journal number one. So let's quickly go along here and I will click through my slides. Let's talk about what is art. So now we've have these notes and we're ready to move on with uh, some good ideas for what our definition is. Uh, you will use three different types of medium uh, to represent, to visually represent your ideas here. So that can be anything from anything that's in your art kit, paint, markers, whatever, to whatever else you have in your house, collage, uh, old buttons or beads or things like that. Uh, you must include your definition of what art is somewhere on your page. And I also put on my final one, what is art too? You don't have to do that, but you do have to have your definition of art somewhere on there. And you must use one page of your sketchbook, but if you want to use two, you're welcome to, and I'll show you that uh, right now. And the due date is going to be Tuesday, February 23rd. So looking at, I, after I did my initial list uh, notes, I made a final list of all the things I really liked and I was gonna try to fit into my artwork. So that's my brainstorming example. This ended up being the final, which turned out a little bit different than I thought it would. And I definitely made some mistakes, but it was really fun. It, a little bit, it, in just a minute, I'm going to show you the process of that. Uh, I used in this video acrylic markers, like acrylic paint markers, uh, collage. I used paint, regular paint. I used markers and uh, acrylic gloss gel with the, the collage pieces. Here's some examples of things online that I pulled. So these are not exactly for what is art, but I wanted to give you an idea of what types of direction you can go in with this journal. So there's no limit to what you can use in your process journal. I want you to really experiment with things. And over the next few weeks, especially, we'll be talking about different ways to make your artwork exciting, uh, different uh, things that you can do. I'll be showing you more things to do in the next couple of process journals to make your mixed media artwork really stand out. Uh, here's some more ideas of things you could do. Uh, so it doesn't have to be paint or collage. Uh, this has only a little bit of collage. This one, they have uh, colored pencil probably somewhere, mostly alcohol marker, but you could include colored pencil in yours too. And then they have just this one collage image that they sort of integrate with the rest of the images. You've got words and markers and collage over here. And I just want you to play with layouts and test materials with this. So now we're going to go into the second part of this video, which is actually going through me doing mine so you can see the process and I'll show you some things along the way. So we'll head over there. So we are going to start with how to cut your image. And I use an X-Acto knife and we also have this nice cutting board, the green thing beneath us. Make sure you're not cutting on your parents' lovely kitchen table that they spent lots of money on, please. If you're using that, make sure you buy a cutting board. And I'm using these special scrapbooking scissors that I found at Hobby Lobby. I really like how short they are and they cut really sharp and fast. So I'm going to trace around the parts of her head that are pretty easy to go around with scissors. And, and I, can, I know I can go pretty fast, like her back is just one swift line. So I'm just gonna go down. Uh, whereas the other part, I'm going to use the exacto, and it's best to cut away from yourself. I sometimes break the rule just because that's that's me, <laughs> but uh, it's best to cut away from yourself if at all possible. I maneuver my knife around a lot. And I almost draw with it as if I would a pencil. Uh, I like to see what, that my cut has been made. And here I go. I finally think, oh yeah, you have to remember to show your students not to cut toward themselves. So here we go with that. And I cut all the way up. I'm actually cutting the head of the baby off. No offense to the baby, but I am going to turn the baby into something else entirely. <laughs> 
and especially tracing around faces. You definitely uh, should get an X-Acto. I think, uh, you know, if you've got one of these small cutting boards, I think I've seen them at, you know, even Walmart or Meyer. But if, if you're not able to find them there, you can definitely easily find one at Joann's, uh, Amazon. And get one of these with an X-Acto and have some fun. I'm going to cut that little last piece off the top of her head. And that is how we cut out an image. And I'm going to trim it. I, once I see my finished piece, I'm going to lay it down on something so I can kind of see if there's anything that I need to trim off. In this next video, I am going to show you how to just play with the, the way your collage is laid out. So one thing that I did and I'm noticing my process is I took, I had these two people on the, the right hand side and then I have these two people on the left and I wanted them to be bigger part of the piece than they ended up being. I sort of made a mistake and you'll see it towards the end, but I really liked how they were in the composition sort of looking in at the beginning. And so I played with the composition here and just sort of tested out what worked and what didn't work. So go ahead and sit and just enjoy watching me figure it out a little bit and I will meet you back at the next part. All right, so this next part is just my process. And it's sped up a little bit here for you, but once I actually got past the drawing part, I realized I didn't like all of the harsh lines. So I ended up kind of blurring those. So I got a pink, an orange, a white, and a black to paint around with. And I am not a person that paints around with black a lot. I know that some of y'all really love it. Um, I was trained to classically paint and to not use black as much as possible and to try to come up with your own shades, but I think painting with black for this was okay because it was sort of an abstract, having fun with texture and line and, and, and all that. So, and then I ended up going in with the white over it, which ultimately, I don't know if I like or not, but you know, what's done is done. Art is pain. Then I go in with a whole layer of acrylic gloss over the whole thing and I'm going to start layering in all of my images that I had originally collected. And I'm going to place them on top of the acrylic gloss before they dry. So I moved pretty fast here. So you can see me sort of 
coming in with my brush and, and going over things where I need to, but I don't spend too much time on the techniques or anything like that. I'm just working to get all the images in. I have a printed image on the right there that I'm going to put on the top. Beware of printed images bl uh, blurring. And here's where I told you I messed up with the people because I, I painted over them with white thinking that it wouldn't be that drastic and it was very drastic. So I ended up going in with this gold leaf and I was like, ah, oh, I'm just going to work with it then. And I went in with this rose gold gold leaf uh, and just putting it around the woman's head. And then I play with a little bit of glitter. This was the really fun part. I started to just say, okay, I'm just going in with glitter. We're going to do the full thing. And I use my fingers a lot too when I make art. And then after everything was dried, I went back in for another round uh, the next day to... Uh, and I was dripping the paint and now you can see the paint drift. I'm using these acrylic paint markers. They're so much fun and they're like 20 bucks on Amazon. If you have an extra little bit of money, buy these. They're super cool. And I just enjoyed going in and playing with the lines and not thinking too much about the meaning of the artwork because the meaning is there. I know what it means. I know how it, what it is for. So I just had fun with making the composition look overall visually pleasing. And then I added in my, this is when I was decide, deciding what to do next. And then I added in some more shapes because I thought I wanted to balance out the bottom a little bit more. And I outlined the women that were on the bottom. Added some more on top of my letters and then went in and did the triangles on the other side. And then the last thing I did was I wrote the rest of my definitions, whatever I could fit. I was going to cut it out and, and paste it on there, but then I decided to just write it with the paint marker because I was having fun. Then I turned the baby's head into a heart. <laughs> and then I made my other one there, and then I was all done. So.